Well, hello there, and thank you so much for joining me on The Best of Both Worlds. This is the finished quilt, Texas Our Texas. It's my quilt and I'm very excited about it and now that it's finished I'm even more excited about it. It was pieced for me by Jane Mitchell who lives in McKinney, Texas and it was designed, um, you can buy the pattern from Alice Wilhoit who also lives in McKinney, Texas. And um, I'm, I'm going to use some freehand techniques and a little bit of Statler. So, Thanks for being with me. Let's get started. The batting that I'm using for my quilt, because it is going to be on the wall, and this makes a really nice wall hanging and show quilt. And so it is called Linda's Choice. It's a thicker cotton, and it is made by Hobbs. It has a scrim on it, which makes it really easy to work with for long arm quilters in particular. You can get that through Linda's Electric Quilters or Rocky Mountain Electric Quilters. And the thread that I'm using for this entire quilt is um, Superior Thread, and it is the Magnifico, and it's like a poly embroidery thread, and it is so beautiful. I'm really having a great time using that thread today. Um, what I've done across the top is I wanted uh, some I wanted some lines up here. I really wanted this defined, but I've used some little um, templates, and these came in the pattern. And then I've decorated them a little bit more. I put an eye in there and some and some things like that. But I traced those in the middle of these triangles, and a boot on each side. One boot this way, and then one boot the other way. And I've got a little uh, cactus and a coyote here, and. Those are going to really stand out. You can see the horse is already starting to really stand out from the background, which is pretty dense. And then there's a splattering of all kinds of sizes of stars all over the quilt, and you'll see those as we go along. But I wanted to show you that, and I am tracing them with my chalk pencil. But you can use whatever um, works for you. I like this because it erases and wipes off very easily with a microcloth. So I want to show you how I did those lines um, evenly. And uh, first of all, I am going to move my channel lock since I can. I'm on the Vision 2, and so I can move my channel lock to, this is the horizontal channel lock, right to one of my buttons. So I will have that on my button. Now I will go down and get my thread. And what I'm going to do is just come along the edges on both sides, but I'll have my channel lock um, across as I come across. And you'll see how quickly that goes. I, I'm really amazed. So I will put my channel lock on and come across to the seam, take my channel lock off and just go up that seam. And what I'm doing here is making sure that this foot is just even with the last line that I stitched. And then I can put my channel lock on again and come back across. It's quite fun actually. Come up right there, come across. And of course you could help that with a ruler to make sure you're right on there if you want. Putting that back on, up and across. Now I'm going to hit the horse, of course. How about that, a rhyme? Um, so I'll come over here like this, and then I'll come around, stitching on the line again, put my channel lock on, and I will finish on this inside of the horse right now because I may not pass that way again. And then I will come back around, even with that line, and then back across. And so I'll just finish that up all the way. It takes a, just a minute for you to get that coordinated um, with your hands, but it's, it's a kind of a game and it is pretty fun. 
like I said, not having to reach up to hit that channel lock is really nice to be able to just have it right there on the machine. Because this is a really great background um, for anything. I think it's easier than stippling and it, you could make it, um, this is about a quarter of an inch because that's how my foot um, is a half an inch and the needle goes in at a quarter, but you could make it even smaller. And those lines are perfectly straight. I think I have one more little tiny line right there. There we go, and that one's finished. Now let me show you what I did to do the diagonal lines. First of all, I wanted to come down and then go back up so I can, this is, makes a really cool color change too when it's up on the wall because these lines take on a different shadow than these do. So I needed to have a straight line there which I just marked with my chalk. And then I am going to use my ruler and again, only using the edge of my foot which I will put my ruler edge right against the last line that I did. And then I sew down to my chalk line and then I just reverse it like this. Come over, it goes really quite fast. And then back up. I just put that ruler right next to the line and then make sure my ruler is lined up. You can see, fairly fast here. Even in the very top, I still use my ruler just because those lines need to be so straight. And there we go. Then I can erase my, erase my line. And I'll wipe that off with a microcloth. Now on the sun, I just came up um, about an inch and I made a little mark there. It's hard to see because this blue is like got white in it too. And then I made a dot out here and I made sure that I was far enough away so that when this is bound that the, end, the tip of the point for the sun will not be off of the edge. And then I will start right here in a seam where I've already stitched, where I've stitched in a ditch. And by the way, this quilt took me two days just to stitch in the ditch. I stitched in the ditch everywhere and went around all of the applique. So it does take quite a while to do that. And I left one little place of applique where I can show you how I did that. So I just go up there and I'm coming back to my mark here. And then I'm coming down this just a little bit, just that quarter inch coming up into there. That will just come down there like that. So that made a double line and now I'm going to do the little swirls around it. And what I like to do is make sure that I want to, I, I need to raise this design up so I have to get those swirls really close. And I've really been looking at swirls in magazines and things and I think people just don't understand how much they need to come into the swirl if they're going to do little swirls. Most of them are just doing little curls and it doesn't look the same. It's okay, but it's not as pretty as the swirls. You see how much I go all the way in and then all the way out, almost like a pinwheel. And after a while, if you're doing this a lot, your arm will ache actually because you're going in so much. But it really makes a difference if you do the swirls correctly. Like I said, any design you do, as long as you're consistent, you're fine. You can always echo these swirls if you don't have quite enough room to do another swirl. Now, do you see how I completely lined that and concentrated on staying really close to that all the way around? And now I can go and fill in the other areas Still making sure that I'm doing all the way in and all the way out, all the way in and all the way out. Just to echo here to get out a little bit here and then back into my swirls. You can change direction on these or stay the same direction. Doesn't matter as long as the shape of them remains the same. 
And I'm gonna just fill in that little area right there. And I crossed a line there and that's perfectly fine to get to the next area. Everyone's so worried about getting cornered. But that really filled that in and that has really raised up that design. I, I really like that. In this little um, blue sashing area with stars um, printed on them, I thought stars and loops would be very appropriate. By the way, I'm using 16 stitches to the inch and I really like it, especially with this um, beautiful Magnifico thread. Many of you have done these stars and loops before, but I'm gonna make sure that I put a half moon in there. There's my little half moon. And I also want a planet, so I'm gonna come all the way around like this, and then I'm gonna come and make some rings around Saturn. I'll just do three rings like that. Make sure I filled in with my loops everywhere. Nice thing about your stars and loops is that you can cross. It's not going to show. You're crossing your stars anyway. So you won't get cornered. And while I'm here, I'll just go right into the next area. And I decided to do behind this, um, behind these stars and um, this Texas or Texas applique, decided to do kind of a sagebrush. This is really what I call a fern spin, but it looked like sagebrush, and I thought that was really cool. So I want to show you how to do those. You come in and you make a little, uh, a little, almost a circle, but not quite, and then you come out, and then you come back, come out, come back, go a little further, don't come back as far, go a little further, not as far, further, and so it's in, it's in rather a circular motion, but you might have to practice that on paper for a minute. And then this one, I'm, I'm curling it that way because I want to finish off that area before I move on. If I came the other way, it would be hard to get out of that area. So as I come back here, see how I'm filling in that area? Fill in that corner, then out. And I'm doing this one-handed, which I can do it better with two, but that's okay. I need to keep my hand out of the way there. And you can vary the size of these. This one, I went this direction so I can fill in on the inside a little bit and then come out and see how easy that works. These are just awesome. And I'll come over here and get close to the star. I'm gonna go right into another one right now. And then curl it around, making sure I'm lining that star. And then as I come over here, I can finish this one. Just takes a little of experience to um, kind of get a, a feel for which direction you turn and how you fill that in before you leave that area. In my mind, I'm always thinking, I'll never pass that way again, so I better make sure that's all filled in. I'm gonna come all the way around on this side and fill in. And then I'll just kind of follow that star, the, uh, the echo of that star. Get back over here. So that sagebrush turned out very nice. And I think I'm just gonna put one great big sagebrush right here. Make sure I go clear over to my T because you want to raise all of those up. So you have to get close to them if they're going to raise out of your project. And I got a little area right there that I need to fill. So I'm just going to cross and come back. here. I'm going to come around on this side and finish it first and then come back to this side. And then I can just skip over here and I'll put one right in here 
and that has filled up that entire area with those little and I'll come over here and I can end right in that seam line. It's okay for you to stitch in a seam line where you've already stitched. My husband just reminded me that these are not sagebrush. These are tumbleweeds and that's what I meant to say. You see, I'm just getting older and that just eluded me. They're tumbleweeds. I'm sorry about that. The tumbling tumbleweeds. This is the state seal of Texas and it has oak leaves and um, little acorns on one side, the other side has leaves and berries. But first of all, in the star, I did a quarter inch around it, and then I'm putting, I want these um, colored areas of this busier fabric to just, just poke out of the quilt. So I'm definitely going to do more quilting in the lighter area where I know the quilting will show. And so I chose to do a feather in there. So I'm coming around like this, and I'll come over and trace the side of that back, and then back, and then over, trace it around, and over. You could do um, the long arm feather. This one is the stacked feather, whatever feather you'd like to put in there. But you can put feathers in everywhere, of course. And I'm going to finish the top of this with just the long arm feathers, where I just trace up and come back so I can get them really tiny in there. Now on the leaves, I'm going to um, just kind of use the piecework here as my stem. And so I'm just coming in, point, and come back, and then put a stem inside of it. And you know, your leaves don't have to be perfect. I'll just put a couple of berries in here while I'm at it, maybe three. Come back and we'll put another leaf. And then one more and that will just meet up with the other stem from the other side. Maybe a couple of more berries there. And then I'll just start putting my leaves on this side. Kind of follow it down, tuck a leaf in here. And I certainly have an area over here that I want to fill, so I'm going to come over here with some leaves. You could draw this all on ahead of time if you were a little worried about your leaves. Remember, somewhere in the world there is a leaf that looks just like yours, seriously and um, it's gonna be just fine. And again, I'll come out into this area with that little leaf and then just kind of make that into a leaf. There's our Texas State Seal. And I do like these areas. Um, they're just kind of poofing out, but I, that makes it even more pronounced on the quilt, and I like that. These flying geese, uh, this pattern has connected many of the blocks on this quilt. And I've done different things in them, but this is one of the easiest things that you can do, and that's just the continuous curve. So I just wanted to show you very quickly how you do that. You just kind of come up and make sure you come down. Now beginners generally swing out a little bit too far. You don't want to swing out very far. See, that's no more than a quarter inch at the very height. And then back. So over and back and over and back, and then to finish it off, you come all the way back, doing the last one. And that's so easy, and yet very, very effective. I still stitched in the ditch, however, to make sure that they are um, flat and didn't distort the rest of the area. In this area, I wanted to draw this because this I'm using blue thread on the blue in the middle of the Lone Stars. I love to put a pattern in that area. And I chose to do a feathered flower, so I just want to do one for you. And I, and I kind of use this area right here as my guide. As I come up, I do a, um, a almost a circle, but not quite. And then I start putting petals here. And um, they're going to reach out and fill in the area. And I also count the number of petals I do when I first start so that I get the same number of petals all the way around. Now these are going to just follow this down like this. 
And this little petal right here is really important because that's going to make the center of each one of these, that's going to make kind of a center. But what I've done, because you turn this like this, what I've done on this star was I turned these two together, these two together, these two together. So now I'm going to do these two and I'll come around like this and I'll come around like that for that one. So they're in pairs. So I come up like this and I come toward that uh, seam. So this one's going that way. And then I'll come over to the seam, one in between, one straight out, one in between, all the way to the top. And then I come down one, two, three. Now this one, I purposely go the other direction. One, two, three, one in between, all the way out, and then three on the way down. Two and three. And that makes a beautiful pattern in there. That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to join me next time when I finish Texas or Texas. See you then.